Dr. NG Dr. Educational, Educational Research Institute, Institute, Institute University, University Mother of All Chennai. Mother of All Chennai. A warm welcome to everyone for the fourth day of induction program, Dicharam 2022. It takes me immense pleasure to welcome our founder, Chancellor Dr. A.C. Shanmugam, sir, our Honorable President, Dr. A.C.S. Arun Kumar, sir, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Gita Lakshmi, ma'am, Provost, Rectors, Registrars, Additional Registrars, All Joint Registrars, Deans, Deputy Deans, HODs, Deputy HODs, teaching and non-teaching staff of various departments for today's session. I would also like to welcome our joint register, first year ENC, Dr. N. S. Shubhashtri Ma'am for this session. And it's a great pleasure to welcome our honorable chief guest, Dr. Sriram K. Vasudevan Sir. Dr. Sriram K. Vasudevan Sir is a blend of industrialist and teaching experience for 15 years. Sir is strongly passionate to take up challenging tasks. Sir is the author and co-author of 47 books for reputed publishers across the globe. And Sir is the author of 132 research papers in reward international journals. Sir has done his doctorate and master's in embedded system. Sir is a winner of Advert University Hack Advert Globe in 2019, awarded by CDRA UAE. And Sir is a member of Intel IoT Advisory Board and selected as IETE. Sir is an NVIDIA DL certified instructor for Jetson AI ambassador and also an Intel certified Edge AI developer. Sir is a completed the Microsoft Build IoT developer challenge and Sir is an Intel IoT innovator. Sir is awarded Top Innovator Award in 2018 and Top Innovator Summit in 2019 and also selected as Intel XE Innovator during March 2020-21. In today's second session, we will see about an insight into Intel's industrial age. Now, I hand over the session to our Honorable Chief Guest. We welcome you, sir. Am I audible? Please confirm. Okay, sir. Confirm. Mr. Saron? Audible. Yeah, 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 thank you. Audible. Right. Uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. And uh, it's, it's very glad to uh, get connected with first year engineering students who are going to be complete engineers in the next three years. Uh, this year I'm leaving, and next three years are going to be very, very crucial for you. And I wish you all the best for your entire career path that you plan to choose. I pray Almighty that all of you get excellent uh, future uh, and most importantly the learning should be very fruitful for you is what i believe should happen and importantly i will tell you something engineering has become totally different now when we joined engineering way back in uh, say about 99 2000 uh, i can say that i will not learn programming i will not learn using embedded systems because i'm very specific to instrumentation and uh, i was very hopeful that i'll get a job only in instrumentation and i had the chance for doing that also but now you cannot say so. It has become more of interdepartmental, interdisciplinary, and you are supposed to learn everything. You have to be innovative. You have to keep yourself on the toe. You should run all the time with a lot of interest in engineering. Engineering is not something that can be done by everybody. You are inside. You are blessed. You should be very happy that you are an, you are an engineering student and engineers create world. We are the best. Believe that. I'm telling you, whatever innovations you have today are all built by engineers. So without engineers in place, things never happen. Without engineers in place, things never go further. One step even further never, never happens. So it's, it's very important to be a very meaningful, sensible, as well as innovative engineer. I'm going to show you some of the excellent examples that I have got today. Uh, I have been building a lot of products. Uh, so my weekends are mostly with innovations and products. I go ahead and participate in a lot of hackathons, contests, international contests, national contests. I fly to many parts of the world to just participate in the contest and most of them we win also. And I proudly say here that uh, we are having a team of three, four students with me. I mean, I'm having a team of three, four students who came all the way with me from their first year. And this team has won about 60, 70 hackathons all over the world, including the Harvard University's Hack Harvard Hackathon 2019. It is not a joke. It is never easy. So what I'm trying to convey here is your journey starts here. You are going to start your journey right here in the first year. Keep your vision straight. Keep your vision very high. You cannot say that 
I will learn everything at the third year. I learn everything at the final year. No, it's not going to work out that way. Engineering is a journey which starts now. It ends up the fourth year. Last semester we forget it because you'll be very busy with the placements. So you've got another seven semesters to completely curate yourself and to make yourself understand which is the journey that I'm going to take. You will like a couple of subjects. You will uh, be in love with a couple of subjects. You will like hands-on. So whichever subjects you like, you need to go ahead and start learning it more. Rest of the things we need to definitely go ahead and learn in parallel because things are going that way. So participate in a lot of external contests. It is very, very important these days. Recruitments are happening very clearly. If you are participating in multiple hackathons, contests, all those forums, submits, you will definitely be noticed. Uh, sir, I have a B.Tech degree, sir. I, I will be like, I have got 90%, 9.5 CGPA. I am a university topper. Uh, can you recruit me? I will say that no, I will prefer a 7.5 over a 9.5 if he has got experience in terms of products, in terms of building products for hackathons and all those things. So do not be a bookworm. Bookworm is not going to be very, very useful. You are going to be an engineer. Engineering is all about hands-on go try it out and labs are going to be the places where you are going to spend most of the time spend time there the one who has got laboratory knowledge is the one who is wanted in the industry sir i know a lot of theory sir what is the use no use uh, i i will not even appreciate it hey, you mugged up something that's not schooling here come on come out of it so you are all from school so some of you would have had the habit of mugging up things and could have vomited the same thing back in the paper now, that's not going to work in engineering. You are going to learn. You are going to express it in the way that you understood it. It's all going to be real time. Whichever department you are in, whichever domain you have chosen, you can try it out practically, see the results, and that's engineering. Well, um, having said that, I've got some excellent demos for you, as I already told you. I'm going to share some of them with you. They are all very, very innovative products. I'm telling you, all these are built for some of the excellent contests all over the world, and we have gotten a lot of attention and most of them have been appreciated worldwide so um, i'll tell you something very interesting all these are built at our home i have a small lab at my home if i'm permitted i can send a photo later uh, so all these are very inexpensive components that we have so we do not spend a lot of money for any of these projects all these projects whatever i'm showing you are built at home not even in the college lab that much easier it is so what you need is innovation what you need is thought process what you need is hard working mentality that's all you will be able to do it and be really very good at the teachers the teachers are the best ones who can take you forward to the next step i am what i am today because of my teachers i am really very thankful to them i i am in very good touch with them so respect teachers be very friendly with them they are like your parents they are the ones who are going to drive you through the next level if somebody is not respecting teachers i am sure that they will lose something really very big so please see them like your parents the best teachers are actually made by students you have to encourage teachers as well we encourage you, in turn, you should encourage us. You should say that's our excellent session. Madam, excellent session. It was very nice impact that you have created. That's the way you can encourage what other things they carry. They do not have anything else. They are living a life which is all time dedicated to, to the students and to the society. So is it not your responsibility to motivate them? I strongly feel it is your responsibility as well. So be well connected with teachers. See them like your parents. The best teacher deserves the best of the applause. Nowadays, it is becoming a rarity that people want to be a teacher because of many issues. So please encourage them. You should create more teachers. That's your responsibility too. Well, having said that, I'm going to show you some of the excellent demos which we have built. I have spent a lot of time in uh, a laboratory sitting at my home. I have a mini lab at home, as I told you. I've got five, six computers all the time connected to me. Uh, so um, I have got so many kits with me, all small kits. They are not so expensive. They will be about 5,000 maximum. So you all can, like three or four people can join together come together, form a team, and build something really innovative. If you need any help, you can reach anyone. Uh, and most importantly, you can reach me also. I'll be very happy to help you. Right? So the first one is an issue which is connected to water. Uh, monitoring the quality of the water is a major concern. I'll tell you what it is before I go in deeper. Every state, every city has got multiple water resources. We have got so many of water resources in Chennai. You must have seen a lot of uh, uh, rivers, ponds, lakes. All those are available. But uh, quality monitoring is still done manually. Now, people go deep inside the river or lake, they collect the water samples, they come back, give it to the chemist, the chemist analyzes it and gives to you back. It's all pain. You go to Ganga, Kashi, there, one side of it, it is clean. Another side of it, they burn bodies and they push it into the river partially. 
so uh, we never know how the water quality is going to be uh, we are spending a lot of money otherwise also so we need to find out a mechanism where we will be able to get the best of the water quality monitor and this innovation whatever i am going to show you is built by our team and we have one multiple honors for this it is appreciated at the level of ca at the level of cisco we have won a lot of honors for this and this is done by three students and me and we did it entirely sitting at lab and we did not spend a lot of money i'm telling you i'm going to show you that and i'm sure you will like it have a look at it and let me know if you have any questions after this just give me one second i'm going to share the screen i hope you will be able to see the screen yes sir what are is is the screen visible yeah visible sir right is it audible let me know is one of the most important resources that we have today is it audible sir is it audible it's audible sir audible okay 97.5 percentage of the available water resources are salty that means we cannot use it right away only 2.5 percentage of the fresh water is available and out of it is already logged in polar ice caps and glaciers only 0.5 percentage of the water is consumable and that's what we are using for agriculture industry and day to day activities as well due to the increased pollution every day there is pollution here increased pollution the water crisis has increased and world health organization says that 0.007 percentage of water only is consumable and is portable due to this pollution 1 billion people in the world today are denied with appropriate sanitation and water resources due to this the most affected countries and region are africa latin america and asia we suffer with water crisis when there is a problem there is always a solution to it we are coming up with a solution of smart water which is going to ease the quality monitoring and all these are done real time with cost effective approach as well we have done a simple but effective and frugal product for you to monitor the quality we have built an usv which is called unmanned surface vehicle with all techno capabilities which can monitor the quality and there are five versions for it this is the first version where we have built our boat in the plastic throwaway material this is an usv in the first version we just tested it for navigation you can see that we have taken seven up bottles as floaters in two sides everything is built by us from the scratch and this is a great engineering work that we have done from the scratch for us to build this usv we tested it in our university's water resource and it was very nicely navigating and we had just two simple microcontroller boards and bluetooth modules for supporting our navigation we used the phone's accelerometer for moving the boat left right forward and back and all these are done very nicely you can see the propellers are also made by us and this is tested for stability the second version we have to include the sensors which are temperature sensors and ph sensors we have included into the boat and the usb then carry these sensors and we started getting the data the data about the ph of the water and the temperature of the water are all up time real time now now we need to use this data to do further analysis and to understand the quality of the water but this boat is not stable so we started building it up in a better way and in the carpentry we sat with our team and we built this beautiful usv this is fully capable all these are built by us right from the scratch as i told you already and this is a great learning for us with a very simple investment we did not invest much of the money here so it is a very simple investment we could build this boat with a simple circuitry and this boat is 100% independent right now that it can go collect the data and come back the point is very simple we are not taking one drop of water even back home we are taking the data alone we store data and we don't store water we do not waste one drop of water even against the current method which is being handled all over the country they collect water they send it to the lab they waste that water as well we do not have that method we collect data we analyze it we provide you real time analytics and you can see that the boat is fantastically moving forward and backward left right all these and we have also geo tagged it right now with gps support it gives you the temperature data ph data with geo tagging nicely and that's going to be shown to you in the second part of this video 
you can see that there is a tire tube which is kept under the boat and that's from our car now this is our 20 cross 50 swimming pool in our university we wanted to visualize how the data looks like and we wanted to know if our boat works our usb works fine in this kind of tough environment so we made our boat flow we made our boat go into this a swimming pool for n number of times and we collected a lot of data this is a fast forward of that uh, a trial that we have run in our a swimming pool in our university and you can see that the boat is moving and it is collecting all data i'll show you the data right now in next few seconds so that you can understand how you can look the data how, how the data can look like for your easier reference we collected around piece of data per trial run and we have a lot of data right now about our swimming pool you can see the data collected in the left hand side and the first column is the temperature the second column is the ph the third and the fourth columns are the lat and the longitude coordinates and now we are going to see how we can generate the temperature clear path. I have set the value to 1 here, which is column 1, temperature. And I am setting the range right now in front of you. And we will get the temperature clear path map generated. We have integrated the Google Earth to MATLAB. And it is spotting the swimming pool right away in front of you in a very nice way. And you can see that we have tested it on a very sunny day. So the temperature range is high. Now we are going to get the clear path for the pH. I have changed the values accordingly. I am setting the range from 1 to 14. And when I generate the clear path map, I can get it immediately in front of me. And you can see it right now. And we have done it immediately after chlorine is added to it. So you can see that the pH is maintained in a very nice way. Now I am trying to change it as well a little bit. I am going to show you even the slightest of the changes uh, which is being captured nicely in the uh, clear path map by changing the values here. You can see that I am changing the values right now. And when I generate it, it is going to show even the slightest of the changes, which is a very appreciable feature. We also have made another version, which is going to be very helpful for you to test the quality even in your overhead tanks. It's small, solid, and very efficient. We are seeing that in front of you right now. And the most important point is we could generate this kind of data with a single sensor set. Now you can see that we have generated a perfect pH and temperature clear path map. We can add more sensors to it if we get more funding and this can be made more meaningful and more data can be given. We can predict, we can analyze and we can. How was it students? Was it nice? See, it is a simple innovation. It is not a toughest of the innovations that you can ever see. This is a very, very simple innovation. It did not take a lot of time. It was about uh, one month time that we spent uh, meticulously towards building this product. And uh, this is something that is amazing, right? This is what is engineering. This product has got multiple engineering domains coming into picture. So you cannot say that, sorry, sir, I do not know coding. I don't want to code. Coding is something that I hate. These are all the statements that I hear from people all these days, which is actually not correct. So please think about providing a solution for the world where we have a lot of problems that you can really solve. So I'll tell you a very simple problem that uh, uh, we face every day and uh, we have we have provided solutions for those kind of problems. Uh, when you drive two wheeler in the night, uh, you will normally have insects falling in your eyes. Uh, many of you would have got that same problem and many of you would have been impacted as well uh, through that. So what is the solution? We are having multiple problems. People are falling in the bathroom and they are dying. Do we have a solution? Can you keep a camera inside the bathroom? No, you cannot. While driving, people at times get their BP low and they meet with accidents. Is there any way that we can predict if they are driving properly and their health is proper for the driving? Do we have a lot of mechanisms available already in the market to uh, track all this and to provide a solution? No. So you are engineers. You are going to become someone who is going to add a lot of value to the system. So please try it that way. Think in that way where you can provide build solutions. Engineering is not theory. So please understand engineering is all about building it practically. I am not against learning theoretical subjects. I am not against learning the fundamental theories. But when you call yourself an engineer, I strongly believe that you should have hands-on experience. You should say that, yeah, I am a guy who can build some solutions for some problems if I am facing it. This is the bigger you need to have in you. And during the COVID uh, second wave uh, and even the earliest of the, uh, I mean, the later part of the third wave, we had a lot of issues with respect to available of ventilator, availability of ventilators. Many of my friends died. Many of my close family members, they were in trouble. Many of my very good uh, uh, colleagues whom we had, they passed away because of uh, non-availability of resources. So I just started as a fun project, I'm telling you, as a real fun project to build a ventilator to see if I can do something there. Then I realized that, yes, this is doable. This is definitely doable. That's why I came up with this project, which is a ventilator that we have built in-house. 
and this is going to do most of the functionalities that the original ventilator that you see in the hospital so this is all built by us and you can see that it's 3500 rupees is what i have spent towards building this just 3500 nothing more than that so have a look at it this is what is called engineering innovate to build something new you are capable your brain is much more fresh than what my brain is your ideologies are better than mine you have got a lot of talent inbuilt with you you are growing you can learn faster than me you can learn faster than many of us who are 40s 50s and we are we are in the industry so you guys are capable believe that and do things accordingly hello friends welcome back in this demo we are going to see how exactly we have constructed a smart ventilator system the system is fully functional and very affordable we have included all the important features and all the vital tracking parameters are also included in this entire setup this setup will help you in static ventilation dynamic ventilation and this has got fail safe mechanism and little more than that the entire setup is fully functional and you are going to see that demo for the same right now yes this is a smart ventilator system that we have built which everybody can afford now the process is very simple the first step is to register the patient in the ventilator system that's what we are doing right now i'm registering a patient by name bharat the moment it is done the world of usage is very simple and easy you could see that immediately a simple and easy to use interface appears in front of you where you would start getting the heart rate and pulse oxygen levels from our setup and you could see that we got a message as connected before the data started peeping in since we have not tested it with any patient as of now you are not seeing any data there the moment i give my data you can see that the heart rate and pulse oximeter will start giving me the data now we could analyze about the hardware setup right now we are using node mcu with esp8266 module for communicating over aws iot core mqtt service with the application arduino nano for intermediary data collection from the sensors and the transfer to the node mcu via serial port we are using max 3000 spo2 and heart rate sensor and we have got mpu 6050 three axis accelerometer for tracking the patient's breathing pattern we have got buzzer to give feedback for every detected heartbeat and we are using stepper motors nema 17 stepper motor a4988 stepper motor driver module and two power supplies for stepper motor and uh, for the microcontroller side as well make sure that the connections are all proper if you are trying the same thing now we are going to track the health vitals right now in the same setup i'm keeping my finger over the sensor and you can see that we get the beep over it that's from the buzzer uh, at the same time you could see the data coming right in the right hand side in the android app so both can be visualized and heard and this helps in understanding that the data is all fine the moment i take it off you can see that there is a real time reflection in the right hand side in the buzzer noise stopped so this is all very important and very easy to understand as well now we will go with the static ventilation the uh, resuscitation process is a direct reflection of the values that are fed from the android app you can see that i am going to give the values and i am going to move the content from the android app and you can see that the resuscitation will start appropriately this is all done real time and we are able to we are able to definitely get it uh, visualized properly through the setup i would say and i have a start stop button as well now when i change the values out there that's what i said whatever values you are changing in the android app you could see that the immediate reaction changes here in the left hand side setup the resuscitation is completely based on the values that are fed from the android app so this is static you are changing it manually as well so we can also make it dynamic and that's what i'm going to show you a little later but this is static you can see that the variations are all fantastic and it's really real time because when you design a system for medical or healthcare systems it should be really real time so that's what we have tried to produce and it's it's closely accurate it's very good in fact i would say the next one is dynamic ventilation that i'm going to show you as well where we are going to learn the patient's respiratory pattern by analyzing the value coming from the accelerometer i'll show you that setup as well before that you can see the complete stretch of how we can vary the values from the lowest end to the highest end for the resuscitation process it's very nice isn't it i hope you liked it now what are we going to go with this dynamic ventilation where the system will start learning the respiratory pattern by analyzing the value coming from the accelerometer which is strapped onto the patient's chest 
and we can track the diaphragm movements and this system tries to imitate the same on the resuscitation process so that the patient would feel more comfortable as he or she can recover and start trying to breathe at their own degree and proportion. You can see that there. Now, the most important part comes. They've got a fail-safe mechanism. And this is, this is how we can have a companion over there and the companion is going to be updated completely about what is the status of the ventilator. So you can see that in the right hand side, we have got a companion mode where I have added something called as Amrita and it is given a number two. Now we'll start getting the updates about the ventilator which is in use and I need to add all this properly. So I'm adding companion data here in the left hand side, which is the ventilator mode. Now you can see that in the right hand side, we'll get updates about the status of the usage of the ventilators. You can see that Bharat is active and there is a green color uh, update available. Now I'm going to disconnect the internet for the ventilator side. I mean the left hand side. Once I do that, I got a message immediately in the right hand side. So the ventilator has small function. So this will definitely help doctors as well as the companions who are sitting with them to understand that if things are all okay. Now, when I enable it again, things will be back in normal mode. You can see that it has gone green color. That's it. I have explained to you very clearly. I explained to you very clearly how exactly our system worked. And this is a very simple, very effective system, I believe. And if you have any comments, suggestions, please go. How was it? Was it uh, uh, easy to understand? Innovations never come from people who do not listen to others. Innovation always comes from people who listens to others, who are empathetic about what is happening, uh, who are very open to uh, what is happening all around. And that's the way innovations are built. Uh, many of you might have uh, bigger bikes like uh, Royal Enfield or you may have KTM or some bikes like that. If there is no side stand facility, 90% of you will not buy that. I'm telling you, I challenge you. So that's an innovation. The side stand is an innovation. So people are thinking in a very innovative way these days. And it is very easy for you to learn from experts as well. So please be connected in LinkedIn. Please be connected through appropriate forums. And only in the classroom, you don't get things. You should actually go out. You should actually see, learn things from others, things from people who can really teach you. And it is going to be more of collaborative learning, right? So uh, please make sure that you are uh, being very community natured, being very community connected in nature and try to get yourself connected for many student ambassador schemes. Every company has got it now. When you see Amazon and you see Intel, every company has got student ambassador schemes. You can become an ambassador for them, get connected with the community. That's the best way you can learn. And I'll tell you one more thing. The best of the students, the topmost students, if you see, they will have a hesitation to teach others. They may feel that if I teach others, my mark will come down. Actually, it is wrong. More you teach, more you earn. More you teach, more you gain. So please do not be in a shell feeling that if I teach others, my percentage will come down. If I teach others, my growth will be coming down. No, it will never come down. You give, you get more. That's the way things are working everywhere. So be a little more open. Uh, hear from others. Teach others. If you are a good teacher, I'm telling you, You've got a lot of opportunities in this world now. So I'm going to show you the next thing, which is going to be very, very interesting. And uh, it is very important for people like pizza, burger, uh, selling boys from uh, Zomato or from Swiggy. Whenever you see them driving, uh, they always tend to have their mobile phones in the hand with the maps on and they go ahead with using the mobile phone and they are driving it. It is very, very dangerous. And every year we lose a lot of people in these kind of accidents. And it's most importantly, the youngsters are being lost. Uh, 18 to 25 is the uh, set of people who face more number of accidents and they are killed. They also kill others. You dying is one part of it. You killing others is the worst part of it. There could be somebody uh, here who has uh, seen this or visualized this uh, with the family or with friends. Accidents are very common these days. So uh, it is it is being seen in a very bad, terrific uh, way right now. So people are being responsible uh, and people are being irresponsible, some of them as well. So they create problems to people who are are very connected and very responsible too. So don't be an irresponsible person. When you drive, you have to drive safe. And uh, these people, the pizza, burger boys, or swiggy boys, or tomato boys, they have a lot of issue in identifying the places to deliver food. If they deliver it late, what happens is they may have to face the fine. So they are rushing it through and they are meeting with a lot of accidents and they are also troubling others. So what I did is we built a very simple innovative system uh, which will assist them in identifying the destination through uh, flickering of LED, which they can wear as a glove. So just seeing to it, you will definitely be happy to know that these kind of innovations are built. This will not cost you more than 2000 rupees. The entire setup is just 2000 rupees. Nothing more than that. Have a look at it.
LEDs will glow until such time the state road covers the stretch of 100 meters or above. If it becomes less than that, the next right or left, whatever you take, would be indicated to you through the LED indication. And you can see that now we are going to head a right hand side, so the right hand side LED is glowing. Since we have fast forwarded the video, it was a long walk, it was about 700 meters. You can see that the flickering appears faster, but it will appear much more faster when you go less than 50 meters. That will be clearly visible shortly, which you can also observe right now. And one important point for you to understand is we are getting all these feeds from Google Directions API. And all the data, whatever is being given by Google, is extracted by us completely. And we are using it in our system. And that's all shown in the right hand side of your screen. And you can see that the flickering is fast right now. This is what I referred some time back. This was taken nearby location and it was a heavy traffic time last evening. Hence, there is a light delay there. You can see that that's the snag that we faced last night for the recording. And all this happened real time. The data acquisition, the analysis, the update of LED status, everything happens real time. And this is the state road that we need to follow to head to our office, which we are standing right now. All these updates are given real time. And one important point that I would like to stress here is you need not keep watching the LED. We have got a module for vibrator. The vibrator will let you know that there is going to be a change. So please look into it. And that too, a left vibrator, right vibrator, both are there. So it will help you out in figuring out which direction do we need to really take. And that's the cool navigation cloud for you. Friends, you can see the complete demo here. I hope you have seen that and uh, um, I hope you liked it. Now this, this are all simplest of the innovations that you can really try out and you can do it on your own. And it is no rocket science. I'm again telling you, only thing that I want you to remember is these are all the things that will really be done once you put effort. Uh, it's all efforts and nothing else. There is no shortcut to success as Sachin Tendulkar says every time. Yeah, you can work hard, you can really go good, but there is no shortcut. You have to only work hard and work smart uh, and you need to make sure that you are winning. So there is no shortcut to success. Give it a try and I'm certain that you all will win. Uh, with this uh, short advice and short input, I should call it an input. I would like to uh, end my session. And uh, one final note here. So people, please be active. Uh, there could be some students who have come from interior villages or uh, uh, people who do not have access to uh, greater resources in terms of learning English. Do not worry. I have come from a place called Sirgadi. It is a small town. Their English will be taught in Tamil. But we have all grown. We have all come to a very decent level by God's grace and the parents' blessings. You will also grow. So don't feel inferior just because you do not know English, just because you do not know how to communicate. You can learn it. And things will become much more easier when you start trying. Day one, your mom would not have uh, been a, a real good, excellent cook. Your dad would not have been a real good cook if he is knowing to cook. They would have spoiled a couple of times at least. They would have learnt it, your father or mother, whomever it is, they would have learnt it over a period of time. Your dad would not have driven the car right now in the first shot. He would have learnt it. So same is the case here. Mom or dad or you or me or anybody. We need to learn. We need to try and then learn. There will be failures. Accept it. That's fine. But require fast. You cannot keep thinking about the failures ever. So everybody has failed, miserably failed. They have woken up and they ran fast. So uh, I request you, all of you, to be very humble, very honest, very straightforward, and uh, with a lot of discipline, you can definitely grow as an individual, also as an engineer. Wish you all all the best, and uh, I'm sure Almighty would bless you with all the uh, good things, and I'm hoping to see many good engineers out of this batch. I thank Shubhashree, ma'am, for organizing this, and this is a great opportunity to talk to young chaps, and, Riam, uh, and I'm really, very happy, and I'm thankful. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everybody, whomever is there organizing it. And thank you. Thank you, sir.
I would like to express my sincere thanks to our founder, Chancellor Dr. A. C. Shanmugam sir, our Honorable President Dr. A. C. S. Arun Kumar sir, Vice Chancellor Dr. Geeta Lakshmi ma'am, Provost, Rectors, Registrars, Additional Registrars, All Joint Registrars, Deans, Deputy Deans, HODs, Deputy HODs, Teaching and Non-Teaching Staff of various departments. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to our joint register first year ENT Dr. N.S. Shubhashree ma'am for her restless effort and constant support for us. I would like to extend my special thanks to our chief guest Dr. Sriram K. Vasudevan sir. Sir has given us a detailed explanation about the water resources and innovation of water resources on his own. The session was very interesting and I hope it enhances the students' knowledge on water resources and navigation below. And last but not the least, thanks to all participants who made this event a grand success. Thank you one and all. Have a great day. Thank you.